Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this lecture uh, over solving linear equations and inequalities. Pause now. Alright, now that you've read that, let's go ahead and look at the objectives. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, when solving s linear equations, the goal of solving linear equations is to isolate the variable to one side of the equal sign. So just kind of keep that in mind throughout this whole uh, lecture. Here are the steps of solving linear equations. You need to pause this and write it down in your notes. If you've already printed them out, then they're there for you to easily access. All right, so let's get this thing on the road. This show on the road, I guess the saying goes. All right, 3x equals 6. Pretty simple linear equation to start with. We're going to do a couple of uh, one-step ones, and then we'll get into some multi-step and slightly complicated uh, equations. So. One step, right? That means, right, as of now, we have no denominator mess with, no grouping symbols. It's just the x times 3 equals 6. So to get rid of the 3, I have to go ahead and do the opposite of the multiplication and divide. Cancels here. x equals 2. Now, most of us probably knew that already just by looking at it. Um, now, our last step, which is step 7, right? says we have to always check. That way we guarantee that we have the right answer. Um, so 3 two times 2 is supposed to equal 6. 3 times 2 is 6, which equals 6. So check. Also note that even though there's no parentheses here, anytime I plug an x in throughout this whole lecture, I'll always put it within parentheses. So that way, I don't confuse if maybe I had a negative 2. I know that it's 3 times negative 2, and I don't confuse it for 3 minus 2 um, or anything else like that. So just always, anytime you plug an x in, put parentheses around it. Next question, x plus 2 equals 1. I'll go ahead and get rid of my addition subtraction. So for this, I'll subtract 2 from both sides. I get x equals 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Now I have to check. So I'll take my negative 1 plus 2. It's supposed to equal 1. Negative 1 plus 2. Well, it does equal 1, which equals 1. So check. That one works as well. All right, moving on to some more problems. I have x divided by 4 equals 5. Now, our rule number 1 says get rid of any common denominators. Uh, 5 is really like 5 over 1, right? Now, we don't write that. It's a little... Uh, nonsensical to write that, but if we need to imagine that, we know that it's over 1. 4 times 1 is 4, so 4 is our common denominator here. So we multiply both sides by 4. So these 4s cancel, so that just gives me an x on this side equals 5 times 4 is 20. So I have to check my answer. 20 divided by... 4 is supposed to equal 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5, which equals 5. So check our answer works. X minus 20, or x equals 20 is it. All right, a couple of multi-step problems here. Uh, 3x minus 5 equals 6. I do not have any denominators. I do not have any grouping symbols, so I need to get rid of any adding or subtracting that is happening. 3x equals 11, and then get rid of our 3 times by dividing both sides by 3. So I get x equals 11 over 3. So now i got to check that. you got to check it every single time. 3 times 11 over 3 uh, minus 5 equals 6. And we always plug it, obviously, back into our original equation. Uh, when I do 3 times 11 over 3, that'll cancel. Give me 11 minus 5 is supposed to equal 6. 11 minus 5 is 6, which equals 6. Check. We know it works. So how do we know? Okay, so all these have worked. And unfortunately, I didn't build any into here that do not have a solution. But how do we know if we don't have a solution? If our x that we checked is incorrect... We'll know by, when we get to the end of it, these 5 equals 5, right? 6 equals 6. It does not have a solution if I get something like 4 equals 5. Can 4 equal 5? No. So that is no solution when we, if you ever see anything like that. 
Another one. Okay, so get rid of the common denominator is our first step. Let's see, pin. All right. So what's our common denominator here? Three. So we multiply both sides by three first. When I distribute this three here, I'll get three times two thirds x, and then I'll have two times three here. So these cancel out, giving me two x minus six equals twelve. And now I just move all everything else over, plus six, plus six, two x equals eighteen, divide everything by two, x equals nine. And I could check that over here. I have two thirds, this is my check. Two thirds times nine minus two should equal four. Now, 2 thirds times 9, that's 18 over 3. Or I could see that 3 can cancel out here and go into 9 3 times. So I have 2 times 3, which equals 6 minus 2 is supposed to equal 4. 6 times 2 is 4 equals 4. Correct. So x equals 9 is our correct solution. One more of these, we have an x on both sides now. So now we have to get our x's on the same side. I like to keep my x, x coefficients positive. Uh, so I will move my lesser x over to the greater x side, minus 2x, minus 2x, and go ahead and move my numbers to the other side. So that gives me x equals 6. Now we have to check. I have 3 times 6 minus 2 is supposed to equal 2 times 6 plus 4. That's 18 minus 2 is supposed to be 12 plus 4. 16 equals 16. Check, that works out. x equals 6 is correct. Challenge problems. Uh, these are ones with strictly variables. It's the same steps and same concepts. Uh, so these are fair game on quizzes and tests, by the way. We're going over them. Uh, solving for x. So I have no denominators. So I get rid of addition subtraction. Minus c. A minus c equals bx. And then b times x. So I divide both sides by b to isolate my x completely. So I get x equals a minus c divided by b. Now, we could still check this answer. Uh, so I have my check here. Oops. Check here. Uh, a equals b times a minus c divided by b plus c. Now, when I distribute this, or when I multiply this in, right, th my b's are going to cancel. So that just gives me a equals a minus c plus c. Negative c plus c cancels each other out. So I get a equals a, which is a true statement. And that's what you're looking for, a true statement at the end. So that works with that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. I'm running out of time. So let's go ahead and look at this one. I have b a minus c equals b plus d. I'm solving for a on this one. So no, always note the variable you're solving for. Solving for a. I have no a's on this side, so go ahead and get rid of addition or subtraction. I have b a equals b plus d plus c. And to get rid of my b times a, I divide everything by b. And you have to do it to the whole side. Just like when you multiply, you have to distribute that to every term. When you divide, you have to make sure you divide every term. So I get a equals b plus d plus c all over b. And we, you can check that one on your own because we have to move on to solving linear inequalities. Now, there is one difference about solving linear inequalities. linear That should be inequalities compared to solving linear equations. Note that me mistake right there. So the f main difference is when solving linear inequalities, if you ever multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, you must flip the inequality direction. For example, 
negative ax is greater than or equal to b. If I divide both sides by a, negative a, I have to flip that so I get x is less than or equal to negative b over a. And same thing, you can see it numerically. If To get rid of my fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So negative 2 over 3. Everything cancels, giving me x. I flip my sign times negative 2 over 3, which gives me a negative 8 over 3. And that would be my solution. So let's go ahead and solve them. The steps are the exact same thing, except, again, the multiplication and division of negatives. Uh, so I'll go ahead and subtract 3. Subtract 3. 2x is greater than 2. Divide both sides by 2. x is greater than 1. So if this is 1 on my number line, uh, I, have, I do not have greater than or equal to. So just greater than, we have an open dot. And then any value greater than 1 will be the correct graphing of that. Now I have variables on both sides. Now they're both negatives, but I want to try to keep my coefficient positive, right? So I'm going to bring this one, my lesser, over to the greater side. Uh, so plus 3x plus 3x. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, subtract 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 3x is x. So I have 1 is greater than or equal to x. Uh, and I cannot simplify that anymore. So I can rewrite that as x is less than or equal to 1. You see, all I did is completely flip everything around. Uh, and this would be a little bit more appropriate way to write it. So here is my 1. Now this time, I have a less than or equal to. So if it's equal to, you fill that in, denoting that, yeah, it can be 1, but it's also everything less than 1. And our last one, we have two inequalities here. Uh, but the steps are still the same. However, what I do to my middle, I have to do to both the outsides. So I still need to isolate this. I want my x term in the middle. So I keep that there. Uh, so I subtract 6 to get that out of there. And then I go ahead and subtract 6 from all sides. So 4 minus 6 gives me negative 2 is greater than 2x is greater than or equal to negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. And then to get x completely by itself, divide everything by 2. So I get negative 1 is greater than x is greater than or equal to negative 9 over 2. Now, if we look at the way that this is, uh, it it's, makes sense, it's true. But our lesser number, our lowest number, is all the way over here to the right, which usually our greater number is that, right? So let's rewrite this as negative 9 over 2 is less than or equal to x is less than negative 1. So I have negative 1 and I have negative 9 over 2. So x is greater than or equal to that. So that means it can equal that, or it's going to be greater than it. However, it's strictly less than 1. So we have an open dot there and go less than it. And there is our number graph, big old closed dot there. All right, so there we go, the end. Uh, I kept it under 15 minutes. Go me. If you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, at bstraub at houstonisd.org. Um, and make sure you answer the questions about this video afterwards. Thank you, and go watch the one over graphing now, because that is also due by the next class.